good to have you back. And in this video, I'd like to talk to you about multiplying complex numbers. In the last video, I talked to you about just sort of the nature of complex numbers and what they are. Well, let's talk about what we can do with them. Let's multiply two numbers, and these are not very uh, uh, scary complex numbers. 2 plus i and 3 plus i. And I'll call that z. Now remember, z is often used to refer to complex numbers. When you see z, a lot of times that's what that is. And also a reminder that i is the square root of minus 1. Okay? So that means i squared, we'll need to know this in a second, is minus 1. If you want to keep going, i cubed is minus i, i to the fourth is 1. Okay? So, Let's look at this now. 2 plus i, 3 plus i. If this were a polynomial, like if this was uh, 2 plus x and 3 plus x, we could multiply it using this simple rule we learned in uh, junior high school, I guess, where you go first, outside, inside, last. Well, that works with this, too. It doesn't have to be a variable there. It can be another number. That works. So let's go first. Okay, that's 2 times 3 is 6, plus outside is 2i plus inside is 3i plus last, which is i squared. i squared is minus 1. And that turns out to be 5 plus 5i. Okay? Now, let's draw a picture of that. I don't know about you. I'm always happier when I'm drawing pictures. Uh, if, I, if, I, if I can't draw a picture of a mathematical problem, that always bothers me a little bit. So let's do this. Let's draw these, these coordinates here. There's real and imaginary. Okay, those are our two axes now. Instead of x and y, we've got real on one axis and imaginary on the other. And remember, the reason we can do that is imaginary numbers are unique. They're different from real numbers. We can't describe one in terms of the other one. So in mathematical terms, you can think of them as being orthogonal. All right, so let's see. If I go out, let's just say that's 5 and that's 5 there. That makes a square. Okay, that makes that theta is 45 degrees, or if you prefer, it's uh, pi over 4 radians. Clean that up a little bit. Okay, and we need to know a uh, radius. Well, let's see. If that's 5 and that's 5, that must be square root of 25 plus 25, square root of that. So r here is the square root of 50. Okay, and that point is 5 plus 5i. So I've now got two ways to describe this number. One way is uh, you know, what you might consider sort of a rectangular kind of way. 5 that way and 5 that way, 5 plus 5i. And the other one is in polar coordinates, a radius of the square root of 50 at 45 degrees from the horizontal there. Both are legitimate. Well, I just multiplied two numbers using this sort of rectangular notation. Let's try it again with polar notation. Okay? Let's take these two numbers and draw pictures of them. Well, that's what it looks like. Let's just say that's 2 plus i there. So that would be 1. And that's 2 on this real imaginary coordinate system. I'll put R, E, and I am just for the uh, compactness, I guess. And if you take the inverse tangent of 1 half, which is that angle there, you get, make sure I do this right, 26.561 degrees. 561 degrees. I just barely have enough room for that. And this turns out this the radius there is the square root of 5. Okay. 2 squared plus 1 squared okay, is 4 plus 1 is 5 squared of that, square root of 5. And I'll just leave it as square root of 5. And I'm going to call that theta 1 and r1, since that's my first number, and I'll do theta 2 and r2. That's my second number. Okay, this is going to be a little bit longer and a little bit lower angle. Okay, so that's 3 plus i. That makes that 1, and that 3 on my real imaginary axis, okay? And if you do, let's see, 3 times 3 is 9, 1 times 1 is 1, so this must be the square root of 10, right? And 
activated to is, let's see, uh, 18.435 degrees. Okay, so far so good. Now, I'm going to tell you first the process, and I'm going to tell you why it works. Okay, the process, Z, is now going to be R1, R2, and then this angle is going to be theta1 plus theta2. Okay, don't worry about why it works for right now. I'll tell you in a second. Okay, so that's going to be square root of 5, square root of 10, times 26.561 degrees plus 18.435 degrees. Well, guess what? That's going to turn out to be square root of 50 at an angle of 45 degrees. So I got the same answer two different ways. I, I treated it as a polynomial and then I added it uh, or I uh, multiplied it together using this uh, polar notation and it works. Now, let me tell you why. I'm going to have to erase all this stuff. If you need, if you need it, you can, again, you can just rewind the video. Um, let's see, I'm going to do all this stuff. Now, Okay, now we just talked about how to multiply two complex numbers by writing them in this polar notation. And uh, it's important to know where that comes from. The relation that makes this all work is something called the Euler relation. It looks like this. And uh, I did a video a little while back on where this comes from, so you can go back and look at that if you like. Now this came as quite a surprise when Euler developed it because it related uh, imaginary numbers and trigonometry, something not a lot of people expected. But this is clearly true. It's, a, it's a, uh, an identity just like the trigonometric identities you might have learned in high school. People are always asking me, my students are always asking me, does this have any intrinsic physical meaning? Well, no, it doesn't. Um, we can apply it to things, but there's nothing inherently physical about it. It's not like F equals MA or something. Just accept that this is true along with lots of other uh, trigonometric relationships that we use all the time. Okay, and so let's, let's uh, draw pictures of our numbers here. Okay, remember this was 2 plus I, so that was a square root of 5. That was 1, that was 2, and I'm going to write this out now in... Uh, radians, because that, that uh, theta there needs to be in radians. It can't have a unit associated with it. Make sure I do this right. That's going to be 0 0.46365, and I'll just put an RAD in there so we know that's radians. And this one, this other number, is going to be, uh, actually let's do that in a minute here. We'll just, let's just do the first one for now. And let's figure out what sine and cosine for these numbers are. We know what all three sides are, so it shouldn't be too hard. Well, cosine of theta equals, uh, let's see, 2 divided by square root of 5. And sine theta is 1 over the square root of 5. Okay? No sweat. Now I'm going to do one other thing here. I'm going to put a radius in there, okay, so I can scale this, you know, like I can change the size of the triangle if I want. And of course, radius equals square root of 5, all right? So let's see, let's just do what this says to do. I'm going to write square root of 5, okay, cosine theta, 2 square roots of 5, plus i, that's 1 over the square root of 5. There you go. That's, that's what that looks like now. And, of course, that cancels out. And look what it looks like when, it, when that cancels out. Okay, that, so that looks like 2 plus i. And because of the left-hand side of this equation, that means that equals square root of 5 e to the 0. I'm going to run out of room here. 0.46365i. That's my magnets out of the way there. Well, I'm not sure I would have guessed that. I, I'm fairly sure I wouldn't have, but that's clearly true. And because of that, I can now write the other uh, angle this way, the, my other complex number. So let me do this. Let's call that R1, and I'll call that theta1 right there. Okay? And let's write R2 and theta2. Well, R2 equals, let's see, we said that was a square root of 10, and theta2 equals, uh, let's see, make sure I get this right here. 0 0.32175, okay? So that means if that is was Z1 was my first complex number, 
z2, 3 plus i, make sure I'm getting that in the frame here, okay, good, I am, equals square root of 10, e, to 0.32175 i power. All right, so far so good. Now, let's go ahead and do the multiplication, but let's do it now in this uh, exponential notation that made, was made possible by the Euler relation. Okay, so I'm going to, let's see, erase some of this stuff, and I'll maybe leave those up for another minute here. So, 2 plus i times 3 plus i equals square root of 5 e to the 0 0.46365 i. Times square root of 10 times e. I'm going to have to erase some more of this stuff here. To the 0. Point, uh, let's see, 32175 i power. Okay? Now, those are just uh, scalars that go out in front, so I can multiply those two together. Now, remember what happens when you try to multiply exponentials. Say I'm multiplying e to the x times e to the 2x. What I get is e to the x plus 2x. Multiplying exponentials lets me add the, the powers here. Okay? So that's going to be square root of 5, square root of 10, e to the 0 0.46365 plus 0 0.32175 i. Well, son of a gun. That's going to be square root of 50 times e to the 0, now make sure I get this right, 7854i. Okay? And that is square root of 50 e to the pi over 4i. There you go. So I'm able to multiply the, the uh, two radii and add the angles. This is why this works. The Euler relation is what makes it possible. Hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.